Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV, and I am stoked to tell you all about my brand new Adjuster program called the Fast Track to Deployment Certification. Wait, what? Certification? Yes, you heard that right. You've been asking me for years if I had a certification or if I could mentor you in some way that would get you special priority onboarding and deployments from major IA firms. Well, I finally did it. So if you're all in on becoming a working cat property adjuster, then your next step is to prove it to our partner firms and get certified by Adjuster TV, the most trusted name in claims. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. So for the past few weeks, we've been doing a brand new series on Adjuster TV where, you know, we answer questions from viewers um, normally in email. You can send me an email, adjustertv.com slash contact, or you can get on an Adjuster TV show and we can sort of have an organic conversation where you ask your questions, we have a conversation about it, we talk about it, stimulates more conversation, more questions. Um, and today we're here with Chris Money. And just a quick note before I introduce Chris, um, everybody who gets on to Adjuster TV in these coaching call videos will receive one year of Adjuster TV Plus for free. So I don't know if you knew that, Chris, but... <laughs> Good news to me. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, so if you go to, if you want to tr try to get on to the show, go over to adjustertv.com slash coach. And there's a calendar link in there. Um, it may be that the dates are pretty full, but I would just keep checking back with it frequently. Um, and you'll see the date pops up and you lock it in and there's a couple of questions in there and away we go. But um, enough about that. So I'm here with Chris Money. Um, Chris, why don't you introduce yourself, kind of let us know where you're from, uh, where you're at in your career, and, uh, and then we'll kind of launch into your first question. Okay. Um, Chris, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and in the, for the last year or so, I've been working primarily daily claims in the area. Got licensed back in, I think it was July of 2020, uh, I believe it was. Um, I come from a production background doing large-scale corporate events, uh, and I've done that for way longer than I like to admit some days. Um, right. But fun. Had a good time. Um, met a lot of great people. But when COVID hit, um, that industry took a, a nosedive, and it was time to reinvent, find something new. Um, and this checked all the boxes for me. Um, insurance adjusting, I kind of stumbled into it, and the more I learned about it, the the more it fit what I was looking for in a career. And uh, so I got licensed and hit the ground running. I got my first deployment uh, August after I got licensed. I think it was August or September. In 2020? In 2020. Okay. And was gone until, oh, I don't know, December or January, something like that. Um, then in 2021, one deployment, uh, down in Houston after we had the big freeze here last year. And I've been doing daily claims ever since that one was over. Uh, a lot of property, no auto, hadn't done that, even though that's a little interesting to me. Um, property, some commercial farm and ranch, some liability stuff. Um, you know, daily claims, it's not it's not the repetition of the, the cat stuff, so. You sure, for sure. Well, let me ask you a question. That's, um, about your, your first deployment, you said, was that from August until De December, January, was that the same, you said on the same storm the whole time? That, that was three different deployments, one right after the other. So, um, I started in Iowa when the derecho went through there. Okay. Um, then went down to, I get them, I get them confused now, went down to Alabama, we had all the hurricanes that year. So I spent some time down the coast and then over in South Carolina. 
to end that year out. Okay. Um, do you have any, like, I'm sure that it was, especially the very first, you know, the derecho you went on was a, certainly a learning experience, but talk, tell me a little bit about how, you, what you feel sort of the secret to surviving those, you know, the chaos of a claims deployment where you're, where you're, you know, everybody and your, their mom is calling you and you got, you got to yeah. learn everything on the job more or less. You do. Yeah, you do. And admittedly growing up, I learned everything the hard way. If I didn't experience it, I didn't learn it. As I've gotten older, it's probably the most, not the most efficient way to learn things. So listen to the people around you. When they tell you, you know, you need to do things this way, do them that way. There's a reason these guys, you know, folks like you, you've been at this a long time and you've made the mistakes and learned from them. And if we can put our egos aside long enough to, to listen to that and take it to heart, that's, that was the approach I took and whatever I was told, you know, I, I would ask questions why there was a time and a place for that. Why do we do it that way? Um, the file reviewer sending in revisions got incredibly frustrating but if you could get them on the phone, they could explain why it was done a certain way. And you start to pick up on, on, on the process, you know, and when you get into something that's different, but similar, you're not making the same mistakes again, but right. you got to pay attention and listen. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So you're, you're 20, so it, so I guess really the middle of 2020, we're now, so, so pretty much a year and a half and you've been running daily claims, um, ever since through pretty much through 2021. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's been a, a different kind of learning experience. So the file, the way the files are written are not the same. Um, you know, I, I do not really want to go back and look at the first claims I wrote. I'm sure they were tragic and I'm sure some of the ones that I write now, if I look back at them in the next two or three years, I'm going to think they're tragic too. But at least I can see where there's improvement and and hopefully the file reviewers do too. But it's a, it's a different, different learn. It's a different experience running daily claims than the cat stuff. For sure. For sure. Okay. Well, let's uh, kind of jump into like your, your first question. Um, I think you had a question about a narrative. Yeah. Um, that's part of where I've seen improvement when I write estimates is that given the information that goes into them. Uh, but there's the, there's that occasion where uh, I've had estimates and claims kicked back for, and the revisions are in the narrative, more information, more information, more. What is there such a thing as too much information? I mean, I know you don't want to put opinion in it is stick to the facts, but really is is there a great way to know you know the the, the basics without going sure. overboard so give me an example of a revision that they're requesting um, what kind of additional information are they asking for in some cases it's specific dates of of the loss which i know that you know, you get, you get that, they tell you cause a loss or the data loss is, you know, such and such February 22nd, whatever. Um, and we need to confirm that. And I guess my feeling is the information was there. Um, and I've confirmed it with the insured or the contractor, or whoever's that appropriate party. Um, so, you know, some specific dates. Um, I had one, it was, I figured out later what it was about, but it was a water loss and it was pretty significant. Um, and they wanted an internet bill. And I thought, why in the world would you want an internet bill for water loss? Well, it was to prove it was the primary residence. So I, huh. I, eventually I understood that. But okay. it's, it's like that that aren't real intuitive, at least not for me. Um, you know, like I said, an internet bill for a water loss, I would never have thought about. So, so well, let me ask you this: in that in that particular circumstance, was it obvious? Was it not obvious from your file that people lived in the house? I didn't think so. And they're they're the insured. It wasn't a rental property. 
you know, it was under a traditional um, HO3 policy. Right. Um, as I read it, there was no indication that it would have been anything other than the primary residence. Right. So, and just so for people's under, people's knowledge, when, when you're looking through the policy, um, a lot of policies, HO3, HO5, and depending on the state, of course, but all, most of them are going to have some sort of language in there about occupancy or vacancy. So in other words, if um, the house has been not lived in for like a minimum, you know, at least 45 days or for for 60 days is pretty common, then that starts to peel coverage back away off of the claim. Like if nobody lived there, if the mm-hmm. house was vacant and they weren't, you know, like a pipe freeze or something like that, nobody was there and keeping the heat on or running the water and all that kind of stuff, then the insurance company's like, like well, it's an increased risk for us. Um, if you're not living there and you're not taking care of the place, then we don't feel like we should pay for damage when stuff that could have been, would have, wouldn't have happened if somebody lived there. Um, so I think, uh, you know, a lot of the time with, with stuff like this in these narratives and in your file, um, and in your photos and in the scope and and the things that you say to the insured and everything else, um, you're going to like, over time, you're going to kind of get calibrated to what they they're looking for. Right. So you'll pick up little things like this, right? So vacancy. Okay. I get it. You know, looking at the photos, the house is gutted. Um, there's no furniture in there. I can't tell if anybody lived there or not. Right. So maybe we want to see an internet bill. Um, so next time you go to a house and you see, you're taking your photos and you're like, I don't see, there's no pictures on the wall or anything. Right. It's been totally just, there's nothing in there. Um, I need to establish residency somehow and put that in my general loss report or my narrative or my diary note or whatever, just so that the file reviewer checks that off or the under, you know, the QA probably is going to pick, pick up on that. I would say on cat claims, the file reviewers might miss that kind of thing, but a file reviewer who's dedicated to doing daily claims every day in and day out, they're absolutely going to, because that's something that comes up all the time. Right. And they, and they might've gotten burned by it. Somebody paid for a bunch of stuff that you know, nobody lived in the house for six months and they paid for it anyway, and they shouldn't have. Um, so you can get calibrated in a way with those little things that aren't intuitive, which I feel like is one of the benefits of the file review process, um, not saying to throw up slot and let them send it back to you just to tell you what to, to correctly to do. But in some cases, you know, you, you almost kind of have to do that, especially if you get on a new event, like a new storm with a new IA firm and a new carrier, and you've read the estimating guidelines and you're trying to do everything, you know, it, this is one of those like diminishing returns things um, where you tell the story of the claim in, in your narrative, in your general loss report, right? Or in the diet, whatever it is that they want you to do. Um, and your photos, you know, match that and your estimate matches that and your diagram and everything is all, it's all everything's there, right? And you could probably spend a lot of extra time going through and polishing and, and you know, like making it, uh, adding things to it, you know, or, or writing more in the, in the, the general loss report. Um, adding extra photos of things that may or may not be related to the claim just to say, well, you know, should, I, I don't know if I should put that in there or not. So I'm going to, you could do that. Um, either way, when you send the file in, especially this is why I tell people and even like way, way, even at the very, very end of my career, um, you know, I've, I've did ran claims for 20 years and once adjuster TV started to like blow up, then I kind of like was like, all right, I'm not taking any more storm deployments or anything, which is great. Um, but even at the very, very end, you know, if I got sent to a new place, especially with a new, even if I, if I had been like off for several months and I wasn't doing dailies or whatever, and I got a storm deployment, I would still do this. I'd send in one or two claims the first day. Like I'd get there like Saturday afternoon, call everybody, you know, and then make two appointments for Sunday afternoon, right? Go look at those, turn those in, and then let file review kick them back and say, hey, you're missing this, that, and the other thing, or we need more photos, or we need fewer photos, whatever it is, right? So look, they're kind of calibrate you. Instead of doing like 15 and then turning those in and then getting all those kicked back. Um, So in a way, file review can kind of calibrate you to where you need to be, right? Because you're going to remember 
this the vacancy thing, right? I mean, you're not going to forget that. The next thing it pops yeah. up, you know, the file gets kicked back, and this would be the same deal. So, um, so when you talk about a narrative, um, I feel like there's um, some definitions that kicked get kicked around. Like, what is what's on specifically this narrative that you're talking about? Well, it's a, um, I mean, it's a template that that they give that the carrier provides, and it it lists you know, everything. I mean, if you okay. have the template in front of you doing the inspection, you know, it, it would basically walk you through the inspection. Right. You know, got the roof section and elevations and interiors and subrogation depreciation, all those things that okay. are that are already there. There's headings for that, and there's uh, some sample text in it. And in some cases, they've got the tokens for Xactimate in it. So right. in there, it auto fills. So it's that that's what they're for the most part, that's what what I'm being provided. Now there's been instances where I've gotten nothing. And you start from you build the file in Xactimate, you're putting in all the insurance information, the whole thing from a, a blank slate. In that case, you know, for for that narrative glr diary how you know like you said whatever they want to call it whatever section it's in for the ones like that i've actually used the one that that you had posted up and modified that to fit fit their needs but that's yeah. what's in it is it's a template that they're letting it's, us start from all right because i've seen i've seen some different things and it depends on the carrier they might they might it's it's a general loss report right it's what yeah. a, nar a narrative is so i actually have an, a sample one um, that maybe is the one you probably, you might've downloaded. Um, so just for, uh, you know, people who are watching this, um, this is kind of what is on a general loss report, right? So, but basically what the, what a, a narrative report or a general loss report, and you can, this is something that you can have in your activity diary. If they don't have like a formal, like we want you to use this template and, and attach it as a PDF to the file, right? A lot of companies will say that, or they'll just say, Hey, in your closing diary in the activity diary and Xactimate or whatever, just put, you know, your general loss report basically. Right. So what you're doing is um, you're telling the insurance company, it's a, it's a sort of a narration of how, what, how the claim went down. Right. So you're saying, you know, uh, what the cause of loss is in this case on this template, it's fire or smoke uh, occurred on the date of loss, right? And then um, uh, inspection, you know, again, you're going to talk about uh, the date and the people that you met with, cause and origin of loss. Um, this is sort of dovetails back into the coverage part. You know, the, the inspection or the damages part, obviously, is where you're going to go into a lot more detail on the damages. Um, if there's a, if there's a PA, right. You know, on this template, we don't have a, a PA. So I'm going to delete that and just say, there's no third party representation, right. Um, emergency repairs, if there's water mitigation on there, or a roofer came out and put tarps all over it, um, overhead and profit, you know, this is again, something that's carrier dependent. Um, if you needed a third party to do a material ID, I tell, right. Um, engineers, experts, vendors, uh, I would say that that's probably in this case is going to be, uh, you know, this is like, if you had, um, somebody doing, um, uh, testing for asbestos, or if you had, um, I mean, I could, I probably would put the contractor on here, um, cause there isn't really another place for it or just build a separate spot for it or delete this since, you know, if, if all the, this is another thing, if all the claims that you're doing, if there are hail claims, you're not going to have engineers or experts or vendors used on the claim unless on a rare occasion, you have an engineer coming along for like a wood, wood roof. Um, and then you want to hit, like it hits the things that, that you should be checking for, right? Personal property. Was there any personal property damage? Um, no loss of use, you know, ALE, that kind of thing. Um, every single <laughs> claim I've ever done in my entire life had a little line somewhere where there's an activity diary or in a GLR or whatever that said, no sub bro, no salvage, right? Um, underwriting issues um, depends on the carrier. Sometimes they have an underwriting, separate underwriting form, which you got to go through, um, or you can put it in here, 
right? Um, I like, there's a form that, that uh, one carrier in particular had built into Xactimate and then you just like tab through and it would have like all of the, the possible underwriting issues and you just check them off. You didn't have to like be like, well, I don't know if that's an underwriting issue. Maybe I'll just put that in here. Nice. Um, and then the closing conversation, obviously this is where you're going to say, Hey, we explained, um, the coverage, the damage, the, um, depreciation mortgagee deductible, uh, first payment, uh, all that kind of stuff to the homeowner on site. We told them that the next steps are, you know, that they just need to go get a contractor and yada, yada, yada. Right. And you can, this can kind of be generic. Um, and then a lot of them have this recommendations, um, where, you know, if somebody's reading through this and it's, it's a huge bunch of huge blocks of text, they can skip out down here to the bottom and say, um, you know, it's the claim was denied based on the coverage decision that they came to appear, right? Um, or whatever it is. If it's a claim without pay, if it's below deductible, um, and then it's the end of it, right? And you, so a template like this, you know, you can copy and paste this and do Xactimate and save it as a as a diary entry. Um, and I would say on a lot of these, you, if you have, if you're, if you're given a, a template that they want you to use and you use that template and don't delete things out of it, just put NA for, for stuff that's not applicable to whatever claim. Right. Um, if they're, if they don't, they still want some of this information, right. The main things that like, and just to kind of going off on a little bit of tangent here, um, when, if you're working for somebody and they don't have a GLR or a narrative that you want, they want you to do, which a lot of companies don't, they don't care about that, but they do care about some of this stuff, right? They want to know who you met with first and last name, contact information, contractor's name, first and last name, contact info. Um, they want to know that what the cause of loss is, if it's hail, you know, say hail and it's covered under the HO5 or whatever it is. Um, and then a brief, br like, especially for cat claims, you know, hail damage found to 12 year old three tab, uh, composition shingle, steep, uh, two story, um, one layer, right. That's the deep, that's pretty much all the detail that I would want to see. It's a file review. You're looking at like what's we're talking about on the roof. I wouldn't want to know like the color and, you know, I'm, you, you might put the exact pitch in there. Like it's a nine twelve. um, uh, but I'm not going to put in it. There's 14 turtle vents, three lead pipe jacks, uh, satellite, you know, boot that needed to be detached and reset, um, you know, and listing off. It's, it's got X number of feet of drip edge and valley metal. You might even you might say that there's valley metal in the valleys that you can because they're going to want to look at a, fo a photo of that and they're going to look in your estimate for it. Um, but I wouldn't be putting things. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Let's put it this way. I wouldn't repeat my estimate, like in like estimate level detail in my GLR. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, because I, I know when I write them, a lot of what I put in is in places or in sections like that is, you know, damages observed to, you know, roof surfaces and all directional roof surfaces and soft roof metals on roof vents or whatever. Yeah. And then and I put in, you know, there's just many hail hits or wind damage or whatever on each slope and a recommendation afterwards. So, yeah, and that was where I got hung up early on was, um, uh, particularly on roofs, was, well, I'm basically writing the estimate if I follow their guidelines, and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of figure that out along the way. And I know that's going to be true for a lot of, a lot of the, the guidelines around these narrative and GLRs. You know, you, you figure out, like I, I figured out about the vacancy stuff. And I mean, I knew right. about the vacancy guidelines in the policy, but I'm just never, you know, it would have never occurred to me to say I need a water bill, an internet bill, an electric bill, or something, right. something when it's a primary residence. Yep. But right, I'll, I won't forget that again. <laughs> right. And that's usually kind of the way it goes is you're like, well, how is this, how am I even getting this claim if there's a question about whether or not they should, it should have been filed in the first place. Right. Right. But it is what it is. Um, so does that help with the, your question about the, the narratives and the GLRs and all that stuff? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, like I said, I, I don't think I want to go back and look at the early ones I wrote because they were terrible, right. I'm sure. Um, 
but yeah, just trying to, I, I know I need to improve in some of that because it's not, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally a claim gets sent back to revise parts of the narrative. It's, it happens a lot less than it used to a year ago, which is great. Right. And I, right. I think that has, in my opinion, something to do with, with working the daily claims versus cat claims, just because of the detail they want. Yeah. And again, I mean, you know, just to kind of sort of circle back on that a little bit, I guess that the, the, there is a pretty significant difference between daily claims and cat claims. That's one of the reasons why, you know, they'll throw warm bodies at cat deployments, but they'll, they kind of want you to have some experience with property claims as a cat adjuster before they'll give you daily claims because they, they can be way more complex because you, you know, a lot of the times they, they want you to kind of take the lead on the claim and do a coverage analysis, um, deciding, you know, you're gonna have to dig into the policy. So you gotta have to have access to the policy and say, yep, this is covered here. Are the, here's the limits. Here's the deductible. Here's the this, that, and the other thing you might be dealing with, not just a roofer, right. Or a siding guy, but maybe like a general contractor, um, a fire, you know, forensic fi engineering fire guy, right. Um, you may be having to deal with the water mitigation company, like the technicians or, you know, serve master, service master, serve pro, whatever. Um, so they, they're a lot more complicated. Even a small claim can have a bunch of stuff in it that if you don't have any experience doing it, you're going to, it's good. You're going to mess it up. Right. So not you specifically. Well, I had one last week, not a, not a big claim. It wasn't I, in the scheme of things, huge, but yeah, there's a medication company involved, a contractor, uh, there was a property manager involved. And there was several people. Yeah. A fire marshal on that, but there, it was water and not fire. So. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So, and then we were, you had some questions about file reviewers and getting your files yeah. back. Uh, I used the term in, in my own mind anyway, about moving the goalposts. You, you send a file in, you get a, a email back asking for revisions. You make the revisions and you get an email back wanting the revisions put back the way they were or, or something like that. Um, you know, if you send in, cause you know, the carriers have different, different ways they want to write it. Sometimes when you're painting the wall, they want you to only seal the area that's been repaired and paint everything else. Some of them just say seal and paint the whole thing. So it just depends. So, you know, and it, it, this, this is maybe a bad example, but it, and this has not happened to me, but in, in that same kind of instance, you know, you might get a file back that says, no, you need to split out the ceiling and painting and paint, you know, two coats or whatever they want to do. And so you make all the changes and it comes back and they're like, well, why did you do that? Did you Put the seal and paint together with the, and it drags, you know, those things tend to drag that file out. Right. Maybe a week when it just seems unnecessary. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm missing something along the way just in what, what their job is. Well, um, so I, file reviewers, I've done file review in the past and I've had, I mean, every file I've done has been, most of them have been file reviewed. Um, the cardinal sin, I would say, of a file reviewer is to uh, send you a list of corrections, right? Five things. You fix all five of those things. And then I have to, as a file reviewer, I have to review it again to make sure you did everything that I asked. Mm -hmm. um, if you do four of the things, then I have to kick it back again and say, hey, you missed the one thing. Right. Um, yeah. But the cardinal sin is if I send you five things and you send back, you, you correct all five of those things, you know, just fine. And then I, I, cause I, and then I have to review the file again. I spot something else and I send you back, I kick that same file back and I say, well, there's at least these three other things too. That's a big no, no, because, you know, I should have, I should have caught everything the first time as a file reviewer. Um, and before I sent the file back to you, because if you send it back and just keep sending a file back for people to correct new things, you're, it's, it makes people mad. Right. And it's not, it wastes everybody's time. Um, so mm -hmm. is that happening or is it, 
that there's, you said that they're, they say, Hey, you know, break out seal and paint, you know, paint one line item, seal the other line item. And then you send it in. Is it somebody else saying, Hey, why'd you do that? Or is it the same person? Same review. Same reviewer. Yeah, same reviewer. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it and possible it you misunderstand? Is it, it's possible you misunderstood what they're asking the first time? Well, I mean, it's, yes, it's possible is the short answer, but in that instance, you know, it's a pretty straight ahead, you know, request. Right. Um, and what I've been asked is not, you know, it's, it's not particularly complex changes necessarily, but it's no, just but as, it, it drags you down. It's, it's, you know, it's, it slows down the whole process for everybody. The homeowners are waiting for the check. The um, well, I, I, File reviewers shouldn't be doing that, but th there's <laughs> there's there's always a possibility that they they kick that file back to you, and then in the intervening time between you know when you return the file uh, before you return the file, they got an email or they had a meeting or something, and they said, "All right, we we're not breaking out steel and paint anymore," right? But if it happens like every time and it's something new, a, a different thing every time, then it could be that 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 file reviewer is just not very experienced and um you know needs they need some training i guess i think in those kinds of situations depending on how much volume you're doing um if you're on cat um and i, I don't i don't recommend let me i'm just trying to think of a way to say this where to where i don't get everybody in trouble um if it's something that's egregious and it's happening like on every single claim that you turn in the file reviewer does that you know send you five things and it's three more things or they say send you five things and then when you send it back then they kick it back to you again and say why did you do those things you know that i just told you to do if that if that happens a bunch then it may be that i i, I pick up the phone and i call my my direct ia manager and say hey listen you know i'm, I'm doing my best to conform to the guidelines and everything else um the file reviewer seems to be, and, I, and I'll, I'll send you a couple of examples. These two files, um, they seem, they, they're sending, they're asking me to make corrections and then making me correct them back. Um, I'm confused. What is it that I'm doing wrong? Right. So I would, I would have, I would kind of like sort of like get your manager involved and then he'll look into it and he may reach out to that, the file, whoever's managing the file reviewers and be like, because it, he may not, he may not be the first phone call on it. Right. So other people may be complaining about it, okay. but I wouldn't, complain i would put it i would always frame everything in a hey what am i doing wrong here how can i how can i help you guys to help me close these claims faster and make sure that everything's correct and that's the way it's the way the carrier wants um what can i do for that right and then leave it open and then have right. them do whatever yeah I, I try not to to have any sort of knee-jerk reaction about what is what is this person doing have they never seen a claim before or i don't do that <laughs> Right. It's because I know I've been in the situation, like you said, you, you ask for something to be done, something changes in the interim and you got to revert back. And I understand, or somebody's had a bad day and they looked at it wrong or whatever. Right. So I um, try to make the assumption something happened on their end, but at the same time, it, like, it does delay the file getting through and that, that just looks bad on is it like this just one person or is it like every single file file reviewer no 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 one 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 in particular it happens rarely but it has happened and i have yeah. had the instance described where they sent in revisions or asked for revisions i sent them in and they sent me back another list that had different things in it right oh well, that's not they're human too they, they yeah. missed something too so i i didn't read too much into that that was I understand, but it's the, we're going to, we're going to go from A to B and then back from B to A. And then, you know, it's. Yeah. It's, it's in not, an instance where we just got to suck it up, buttercup. And well, yeah, I would say at the, the end, at the end of the day, you know, the adjuster there's, there's things that should and should not happen. Certainly. Um, you know, there's, the, the file reviewers shouldn't be adjusting the claim from the desk. Um, they shouldn't be sending you different lists of, you know, claims. You hear that popping sound? I didn't hear it. Talk? No, maybe it's just on my end. Um, 
they shouldn't be, you know, having you correct things back and forth a bunch of different ways. And if it's, if it's egregious, then now we get a, your manager involved. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we have to do everything the way they want us to do it. Right. And if they, on a hurricanes, you probably experienced this on a hurricane, they changed every day. Hey, we're doing it this way. Oh. So we're doing it that way. And the very, very next day, um, you remember that thing we told you to do this way, you know, you're doing it this way. And then the next day they change yeah. it back and back and forth and back and forth. You just got to roll with it yeah. um, and just try to get your files in. And, you know, it may be that you, you can, that's a lot of noise and you just got to do, do what they ask, but don't sit there and wait be like, well, I'm just going to wait three days because, you know, I just know they're just going to change it again. You know, yeah. turn the file in, right. If they want you to change it, they'll kick it back. So okay. what else you got? That's where the approach I've taken. So trying yeah. not to make too many decisions and just roll with it to, and to look, it's egregious. Yeah. Yeah. That's and if the, you're, if you're a person who's easy to work with and you know, you're, you're always positioning yourself and framing yourself as like, Hey, I'm just here to help, you know, just tell me what to do. I just want to make sure these files get, get closed and what can I do to help the process or whatever. Yep. Right. Instead of like, you know, this guy, you got, what'd you hire people off the street? I mean, they don't know anything, da, 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 da. which I've gotten before somehow like, I was doing a file review on hurricane uh Irma. Is that right? And somebody got a hold of my number somehow. I don't know how they did it. And called me up and started chewing me out. And I was like, you know, and they didn't, they had been that was their first storm. And I was like, I know you're under a lot of stress, but let me let's let's walk through this. So anyway. Okay. okay. Well those those were the two that I had initially sent in, but there was a as time has gone on few more thoughts came to mind. As sure. Um, one of these, is, I'm sure, has been addressed uh, in the past and in some form or fashion um, about getting, getting through the gatekeeper at some of these firms. So, you know, it's, we hopefully learn real quick that it's real easy to get on a roster. That's not the hard part. It's getting in touch with the dispatchers and, and the guys and girls that hand out the planes, getting to those people and convincing them, you know, you, you're, you're ready to take, take on claims, even if it's just one as a test run, what, whatever the case is, is, is there a way besides just continuing to bang on the door, which, you know, I, I'm persistent enough. I continue to bang on doors and it's, it paid off actually this morning. So I, I, got some claims that came in from a firm I haven't worked with in a long time, which was, I, I enjoy that. Um, but is there a way besides just that persistence, um, you know, some super secret, you know, the squirrel flies at midnight kind of password. <laughs> uh, well, so I, I think that, you know, if you, if you look at it from the, the IA firm's perspective, you know, they've got like a volume of claims that come in from their carrier clients and they're, they have people that go out on these storms all the time or, or they get the If you're talking about, I talking about like getting daily assignments for locally. Yeah. Dailies. Yeah. And forms, I know we're, we're not in that season right now. There's, and there's not a lot going on in general right now. Right. Uh, and I, so, yeah, I would say that, um, that generally speaking, when firms are dipping into their rosters to, to start using people that they haven't used before, or they've used infrequently is when they are running short on personnel, right? It's just a kind of a numbers game, I think for them mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, I think that, um, there's always room for a better adjuster to, in a territory, right? You know, if you like popped into the middle of I firm X's, you know, roster and um, started getting claims in your area, daily claims that you probably would fall somewhere in the middle, maybe the upper middle or the, you know, somewhere in there, but there'd be people that were not as productive as you, or it didn't have as good of a file quality as you or good as customer service. Maybe people that were certainly were better. Um, obviously you want to be able to get in there, improve yourself. 
Um, I think I would say that, you know, I'm going to always kind of reach back for networking, right? I mean, you can call like, Hey, I got a new license or, you know, I can handle some remote desk work or whatever, or I picked up a, a new certification or whatever. Cause you always want to call in when you, when you get something new, some new little training, or I just renewed, you know, this license or whatever it is, um, right. calling in and talking to somebody. Um, but I think that, um, a lot of the, most of the major firms, especially in the last couple of years, have been doing a lot of live events. Um, and of course, they're all always at the NACA convention. Um, I would try to attend those sort of things. You know, if, if you're on, you know, a, a particular rosters or a firm's roster and you're like, man, I, I know that they have these, these carriers and I've got some experience with them. I'm certified to, to run claims for those three carriers. And I, and I, I know in this area, I mean, I see like there's signs everywhere for the their sales agents. I know that they're, they've got lots and lots of policies here, but I, I can't seem to get my hands on any of them. Um, that if you are able to attend anything that that firm does, right. If they have like, um, if they're doing like some sort of like an exactimate thing or they're doing, a a lot of firms and I would say probably all the big firms all have training centers in Dallas, Fort Worth, all of them do mm -hmm. some kind or another. If you look and see what their schedule is for what's, what's upcoming trainings are, um, whatever it is, it's NFIP or who knows what it is, right? Go to those things. And those are, this is the little known secret kind of a thing. Those are as much networking and like recruiting events as they are like, Hey, we want to get some information into your head kind of a thing. Right. Even if you're, right. cause they'll have people in there who aren't on the roster who signed up for the, you know, to take this free training or this $150 training, three days, whatever it is, seminar. Um, if they have meetups um, and then that's where you can, you know, kind of show how well, how good you are in Xactimate or how good you are in stability or this, you know, you're asking questions. You're always there a little bit early and you're talking, you go walk up and introduce yourself to the instructor, whoever's running the class and, you know, Hey, I live here, you know, and I run dailies and, and, uh, I'm actually state farm certified or so, you know, all state certified or whatever certified. And, uh, you know, I don't want to use waste up too much time, too much of your time. I know you're getting ready to start class, but, uh, I'm always ready to take dailies in the area. I've got a lot of experience with it. You know, I've got experience with it. Um, so, and again, my name's Chris and uh, I'm excited to take your class, go sit down. Right. And then you're, yeah. you popped up a little bit on his radar, you know, and at the end of the thing, um, talk to him again. And he may say, Hey, oh, you know what? Give, I got to call so-and-so uh, he's, he's the guy that does dispatch for, you know, such, such carrier locally here. And uh, he may have something for you. Right. So you're networking, you're kind of pinging for it. And it may be fruitless or it may not, who knows, but it's, it's, right. it's one of those, like, you know, you show up, there's more of a chance than if you didn't show up at all. Right. Um, so I would say to find that, to, to find the gatekeepers, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of sort of confounding factors that are going to be totally beyond our control. Right. Like, so what's the weather doing? You know, it may be that there's just a sudden weird dip in the, the number of daily claims in the area. The, you know, the, 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 a huge firm decides they want to not use IAs anymore. Right. So now all that work goes away. Right. And it happens. And I heard that it may happen mm -hmm. again. Right. Just, just recently um, with the big carrier. Um, so those are things that are totally out of control. It's totally out of everybody's control. But if you're, if you're the face that keeps popping up, you know, here and there, and you're calling in every time, every time you get a new certification or a new, whatever, um, then you're the face that's that they may reach to and say, Oh, that guy, Chris, Chris money, that dude. Yeah. He was in that class. Let's, let's, uh, let's give him some claims. Let's see what he's, he could do. We, we had a little, you know, a hailstorm in, uh, you know, 60 miles down the road, you know, let's see if he wants to go over there and get a hotel and, and hang out for a couple of weeks and do some hail and a little tiny town. Who knows? You know, you never know. Um, right. cause you're in the area and you're available and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to say other than just being like James Mathis will say, uh, he's just the world's biggest pest, but he's, yeah. he's kind of a pet, <laughs> like an actual pest. You want to be like, you know, it's like a butterfly landing on it, not a bee like coming over and stinging you and being like, Hey, look at me, look at me like James. <laughs> is, so, 
I hope he watches this. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice on, on, uh, trying to get past the gatekeepers. You have to make yourself available to them and make yourself indispensable to them in whatever way that you can. Um, <clears throat> and just get on their radar through networking. Okay. Well, that's something I'm working on. I know some of these firms have some trainings coming up that I'm actually signed up and, and the, the firms that I am getting dailies from, you know, they, you know, we got this thing, but it is not real close to home. Well, that's okay. I go out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and it, yeah, it really, it's, it's not anything out of the ordinary. So it's just, you know, 30 minutes further than what I would normally go. Yeah, well, that's deal. nothing. Yeah, that's no problem. Out out here, no, that's nothing. So, that's right. Um, the other, let's see. I've, I've heard you talk, and I've heard other people talk about the the efficiencies. You know, figuring out how you improve your efficiency. So you're writing claims on site. You're, you know. It, Daily is at least for me, it hasn't worked like that where I'm issuing payment or anything like that. Right. But are there any kind of tricks to the trade to that efficiency? And I know it's going to be different for everybody because everybody works a little bit differently. Um, but I mean, things like pre filling out some of that narrative, labeling photos takes forever. And I know that's been an ongoing thing. I have a little little box sitting next to my computer here that's pre-programmed with labels that I use all the time. So I've sped that up. Um, it just types it in for me. I hit one button and I can type a whole phrase. Um, I can't do that in my truck. Sitting in front of it, I have that with me. Um, are the macros, are they useful? I mean, I mean, what are, what are some, or are there some specific tricks that like work for you that sped you up? That, yeah. That? For sure. For sure. And that was that, like, I, I've said this before on, on here, but, um, the thing that really, really, really kind of got me, like the reason why I stayed in it for so long and, and I, the, what, one of the pieces, one of the half dozen things that I really enjoyed about it was sort of the, you know, the puzzle of the challenge of being more efficient. Right. And we talk about efficiency. We're not talking about like, you know, going like faster, like running faster from point A to B, it's really kind of making point A to point B shorter, right? So you walk, you go the same speed, you just, or it's less effort to get there. Um, so that's what I talk about when I talk about efficiency. And I think that, you know, when you, I call it incremental efficiencies, I think there's, there's probably another word for it, but basically if I take one thing and it shaves 90 seconds off of the time it takes me to close a claim. That's, that's pretty cool. You know, at the end of the day, I said like 10 minutes or something like that. I mean, that's not, it's not really that useful, but if I take 10 things and sh shave 90 seconds off each one of those per claim, then that's, now we're starting to talk about, you know, we're taking a claims process. It may take an hour and a half down to 55 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. Right. So, and that's significant, right? Because you can, you know, 30 mm -hmm. minutes for three of, off of three claims is, you know, that's another, that's another claim you could do in the day. Right. So um, I think that, you know, primarily for efficiency, absolutely 1000% macros. Um, that's the very first very first thing that we should, anybody should talk about when you talk about efficiency with um, running claims, property claims, and that is, you know, building your own macros, right? Taking the, the common things and it works really, really well on cat because you're, you know, you may be in the same neighborhood, everybody it's the same builders, same roofing material, everybody's roofs are the same age, right? So you're able to like make a common macro that covers all the things you possibly could find on a particular roof. And then all you got to do when you, when you recall the, when you run the macro, they call it, I don't, it's just a template. You just pop it. Just, right. it, it just inserts it into your estimate. Um, then you delete out the things that are on, on that particular house. Right. So it's, it's more, it's, it's, it makes it easier to remember things to include things in your estimate. Um, because you're, you're going through and saying, all right, well, there's no chimney flashing on this one. Delete. It's not two story delete. It's not 
uh, steep delete. Um, there's no drip edge on the rake edges. So, you know, but there's gutter apron on it. So delete drip edge, like keep the gutter apron. The, the pipe jacks are lead. They're not plastic. Delete the plastic ones. Turtle vents are plastic. They're not metal. Delete the metal. You know, so you go through instead of being trying to like, if you didn't take very good scope notes, you may be trying to remember what was on there. This way you go the other way, right? I feel that that makes it a much more accurate file because I'm not having to try and like make sure that I remembered all the things, right? Valley metal. Wait a minute. Was there valley metal on that? Oh shoot. I didn't see, cause you need to see a little dormer, right? Was there, is there a valley? Is there metal in those valleys? I didn't look right now. If you're sitting at the house, this is one of the things I like about sitting at the house. I'm going to pop up and jump up there real quick and peek under, take a picture. Cause the file reviewer is going to want to see it, right? If you include value metal, they want to see a picture of it, pop it in there. Right. Um, so macros are a really big deal. If you're doing large complex claims, um, you can do the same thing by just creating a new, a new blank estimate in Xactimate if you're using Xactimate. And, you know, you might take the most absolute complex file that you've done in the past for a water claim, label your, this new blank estimate water, and then copy and paste everything from that estimate in there. And I would say, you know, have one bathroom in that template that has every possible thing you're going to find in, in, a, in a bathroom, right? Angle stops, you know, a uh, three foot vanity, a six foot vanity, you know, with everything attached and then maybe like cabinets with a ca separate countertop and a backsplash, mirror, detach and reset, doorknobs. I mean, everything you should possibly think of that would go into a like, right. water estimate. And then don't have like five bathrooms on, just have one bathroom because that's you're going to be a template bathroom. And then kitchen, it's really like mainly like the kitchen and the bathrooms and rooms with utilities and appliances and stuff in them. And then you could have one generic mm -hmm. bedroom, you know, and maybe like a, a, a framing thing if you needed to do anything out and like cleaning contents manipulation, right? With separate folders for each one of those things. Um, and then you can just import that into your estimate when you get a big one and you're like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, 15 bathrooms, but you know, I've got a template that I know covers all the things that are in each one of those bathrooms, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Um, activity diary entries. Um, do you have to do those in Xactimate? Use a diary. I haven't been asked to, okay. Okay. I haven't been asked um, to do that. So where do you put, like, if, if you want to document that you called the insured, where do you put that? I put it in the narrative or the GLR template. Okay, so they don't want to see that necessarily when you did it. They just want to see it later. When yeah. You're in a file in. Generally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I make that initial contact, there's a different thing. There's a space in exactly for that, which is right. in there. But talking to contractors or PAs or whatever, it's right. For me, it's all been in that GLR. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, you can create templates for just about everything in the software, I think. As far as like, um, uh, like labeling photos goes. Um, and then I think, and I haven't personally used it on live claims because it's kind of came out up like a little bit after it was commonly used, I should say. And like, the, I think the latest version was like good enough to where I would think about doing it, using it on live claims, but it was after I kind of like retired from the field. But if you're able to get Xactimate mobile, like get a exact, like a pro account, and get Xactimate mm -hmm. mobile. You can take photos in there, do the voice to text, right? You know, take the photo, hit the little microphone button, uh, front of risk, right? And then next, and then do all that stuff. Uh, the, the, I think the, the beautiful thing about using Xactimate mobile is that is the Sketch AR using, it, especially like an iPhone 12 or later um, with the LiDAR scanner on it you can get mm -hmm. measurements in a room and like a complex with a hall going up here and a little bump out and a bay window and everything. And as long as it takes you to walk around and just like hit the button that says wall, right? It could take you four minutes or less. I think it's the fastest mm -hmm. way I've ever, I've ever tried to get measurements in a room. Cause you could take your laser and go around and beep and draw the room and make yeah. sure you, oh, they get that angle right. You know, this thing, it's just, and then it, it builds a sketch for you. And when you, when you send that back down to Xactimate, open up on your, your laptop, there's the sketch. And you just start, drop, start dropping line items on it, right? So that's, it saves you drawing a sketch, saves you from having to break out your, your you know, 
measuring tape or your laser or whatever um, saves you from having to recreate the sketch that you drew on your your piece of paper on your your scope sheet in Xactimate. Xactimate Mobile is a really really big one, I think. Um, and uh, for everything else, I always get pushed back on this that uh, people don't believe it. Um, with the closing on site, I think that that's something that everybody should strive to do. Um, I can tell you 100% that the carriers for their best customer service numbers for their JD power and their NPS rating, all that stuff, they want adjusters to close on site and hand the homeowner a check, right? Obviously for a lot of carriers, for I, for check, I mean, handing out checks. But if you can get an agreed scope and price with the contractor on site, have the guy sit there and wait. If, it, if you're super fast and you got all, everything's all, you know, all your efficiencies and everything, get the estimate at least written and then, you know, print it out, show it to the contractor. And he's like, yeah, it looks good. I can do it for that. Then you guys walk up to the homeowner together and here's the first check. Here's the second check, blah, blah, blah. And explain everything to them on site. That saves phone calls later, right? Because you don't have to do a settlement mm -hmm. call. Um, they may call back and say, Hey, we forgot something or it's not enough now for whatever reason, which is fine. Um, it saves, it makes you a more accurate estimate because they might say, you know, while you're still at the house they may come over and knock on the window. Um, I, I know you asked me if there was any damage to the inside of the house, uh, when you first got here and we didn't think there was, but we looked while you were outside and we found some, right. I'm going to jump out of the car with my camera and go get pictures of that. Right. Um, because it saves a supplement later having to reopen the file, do another diary entry, do another, this, do another, that, do another, whatever, right. Having it, it's just a new invoice. I mean, the whole it's, it's when you have to do a supplement for even the smallest thing, it, it takes a lot of time. Right. So if you can do mm -hmm. stuff on site, that's great. If you can't for large water losses or large losses, I don't think it's really that reasonable to do it. I think it can be done, but it's something that a person would really have to focus on in order to make that happen, to close those kind of things on site. At the minimum, I would say, let's get your um, photos in there and get them labeled it's while you're sitting at the house. Cause you sit out in your truck and do that, you know, and that gives you some time to be, you know, oh shoot, I didn't get the valley metal, right? Or they came over and knock on the window and say, hey, you know, we found that the, you know, the grill covers also got holes in it or whatever it is. Um, so it makes for a more accurate file. Um, you know, you're able to closing it's on site in general, it, you're able to close out, turn that file on that day. I'm talking about when I say close on site, I mean, everything, the invoice, the diary, the GLR, the whole nine yards. Right. I go to Starbucks at the end of the day and grab a coffee or a decaf or whatever, hit upload. And then those files are all going into my paycheck, right? Or they're going to the file review, hopefully not to get kicked back. And then they're going to my paycheck. Then the next day I do it over again. Um, so I've got some systems for, you know, trying to make conditions for myself as, um, as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for to make it as easy for me as possible to, to be successful. I don't want to do work at the hotel room. I don't want to do work at home because there's just too many distractions with TVs there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, wife's there let's take the dog for a walk oh we forgot we we're supposed to do the you know can you help me up open up this jar you know it's like yeah. it's endless distractions right um well maybe i'll just take a break and eat a sandwich and uh watch youtube for you now and suddenly three hours later you're like oh maybe i should do some work if i go to like starbucks if i can't close everything on site it's in front of the house i'm gonna go to, to like a coffee shop and or someplace, Panera, whatever, that has internet. And I'm going to finish everything. Cause I'm, I'm like, I don't want to be sitting here in this, this place or any longer than I have to no other distractions, right? Let's just get this work done. Maybe make a couple phone calls and then go home, put my feet up and not worry about work. And even if it's like, if I want a big cat and you know, I might be at the coffee shop until they close at nine o'clock at night. Right. And, but I'm going to go home and go to bed right after that. Probably not going to get coffee. But, <laughs> so, but man, I really appreciate it. I gotta, I gotta run and jump on another one of these, but, uh, Chris, thank you so much for, for jumping on here. These are really good questions. And I, and I, I, I think that people are going to find a lot of value, um, in our conversation. Um, and again, I'll shoot you an email with, uh, um, 
or you'll get an email from adjuster TV plus with the free year. Um, so you can jump in there and kind of take a look at some stuff. And awesome. I do talk about efficiency and workflow stuff in there as well. And I'm always hammering on closing on site, especially for cat um, again, you know, daily stuff, maybe not so much, but um, thank you so much for being here, man. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you later and, and keep me posted on how your career goes. Will do. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate the time. You bet. We'll see you later. Adjuster TV always give 100% unless you're donating blood.